Hi there. In this QuickBooks Online video, we'll take a quick look at how we can use uh, multiple currencies. So first of all, I'm going to turn on multiple currencies. So we find those under the gear icon, accounts and settings. Just takes a second for that nav bar to populate advanced. And then down on currency, I'm going to turn that on. We're using US dollars as our home currency. So what that means is when we enter a transaction um, using a foreign currency, it'll always be converted back to this currency. That's what the home currency is. It gives you a little bit of a warning that we can't turn this feature off, but if you don't uh, find that you're actually using multiple currencies, once you turn it on, you can just ignore them. It doesn't, it's of no, uh, there's no issue with not using multiple currencies if you have it turned on. I'll choose save. And then you can add multi more than one currency by clicking on the manage currencies. Once you turn multiple currencies on. So presently we have euros and Canadian dollars. I'm not going to add any more currencies, but you can add any currency, even something like Estonia, which is a very small country. Um, we can change some of some of the settings about our currency here. So we can enter our own rate of, if we like. Um, it'll get the, a rate from an API on the internet. So um, even if you use a date other than today, it'll pick up the currency exchange for that date, which is fairly recent. It seems like a previous version didn't do that if you went back a couple of days. So what I'm going to quickly do now is add a Canadian currency bank account. We'll do a transfer to that bank account from a US account and we'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to go to accounting, chart of accounts, create a new account. Bank under bank accounts. This will be a checking account, and I'll make this uh, Chase CAD checking. And now we have a currency field that we didn't have before when we created banks. And I'll go with CAD. So basically, any transaction with this account will be converted to US dollars. Choose save. I won't worry about a description. And I'll create a new journal entry. You can do a bank transfer if you like as well. The results will be the same. And I'm going to put money into my Canadian account. Notice uh, we do have the option of choosing what currency we're um, transferring into that account. Uh, the reason I point that out is some accounting packages do not give you that option. It'll always be the home currency. I'm going to use Canadian dollars. So we just need $2,000 in our Canadian account, 2000 Canadian. There's the exchange rate. You can always overrate ride that if you're getting a different rate as well. So the bank may actually give you a different rate. It might be at 1% lower or something like that when you're uh, selling, 1% higher when you're buying. And that's the reason you want to create a, a multiple currency bank account is so that you're not constantly buying and selling with every transaction. And I'm going to get that from <coughs> for sound checking. So notice it does the conversion. If you look at the journal entry, you know how to do that. You can go and look at the journal entry on your own. You'll see that this is the amount that is transferred on our books. <clears throat> so uh, that's the first thing that uh, QuickBooks Online does for us in the way of multiple currencies is that, of course, it uh, uses an API to get the exchange rate and automatically calculates that when we um, enter a transaction using 
that currency. And I'm going to quickly create a vendor. So notice when we create a vendor, now that we've turned on multiple currencies, the very first field is currency. So this will be, I'm going to leave that up. Um, this will be a vendor in Canada that we buy processors from. So they like us to pay them in Canadian dollars. I'm just going to add terms as well. I don't think I've mentioned terms previously. Where are the terms here? Uh, but by default, um, our aging periods are 30 days. Oh, there are no terms on the side. Oh, there they are. Hard to see. So basically, uh, this, any invoice from, or bill, I should say, in this situation from Northwest will be due in 30 days. The default for the entire program is also 30 days. So it's kind of redundant. So I'm going to make a, enter a new bill. So as soon as I pick up Northwest, we get the little exchange rate. I'm going to use today. There's the ther terms there. Again, comes from Northwest terms if we override the default. And their bill is Northwest processors. That's my prefix, so I can quickly identify any bill from particular vendor that's my vendor code for them and I'm gonna go ahead and tag that hardware and uh, so I'm gonna buy three processors So you see that the price has been converted to US dollars. And I'll go ahead and save and close. And then I'm going to go ahead and pay that bill. My favorite method to pay bills, by the way, is to use that option there. Notice when I go to pay the bill, the bill that I just entered does not come up on the list. It's because I presently have only US bills. When I switch to Canadian, here it is. And I'll go ahead and pay that. Um, so I'll do the same thing on the AR side, create a Canadian customer um, in this situation, I'm going to sell them something on account, but I'm going to pay them a day later. So, of course, the exchange will always change. So the second thing that QuickBooks Online does for us is it'll calculate any difference between exchange rates when a customer or if, if we buy from a vendor, uh, if we um, sell or buy an account and then we pay later at a different exchange rate, the amount, the difference will be put into an exchange gain loss expense account. So we'll take a look at that. Happens on the um, payable side as well as the receivable side. We'll just quickly look at the receivable side. So I'm going to just quickly create a new customer. She's going to be Canadian. And I'm just going to use Amanda Jackson as her company name. You can use that as a first last name if you like. And again, I'm going to add terms. See if I can find them a little quicker this time. There, there they are. And 
and we can create a new invoice right here. Canadian dollars because we chose Canadian for her. And I'm gonna make this invoice yesterday. So you'll notice it's presently 72.9. So it actually picks up yesterday's exchange rate from an API hardware. And we're gonna sell her a laptop, uh, an Acer. Again, price changes. And we go ahead and save and close. Now we'll receive payments so we can receive the payment here and now it's today. Um, by the way, um, if you look at your chart of accounts at this juncture before I process this, you'll see that there is no exchange gain loss account on the chart of accounts presently. But once we process this transaction, it'll appear. So go ahead and take a look at that if you like. So basically these accounts get created dynamically when they're required, which I think is very powerful. Uh, she's paying with a check. Reference number is her check number. And we're putting that into our US account. I mean, sorry, a Canadian account. and save and close. So again, the amount that she bought the item at was different for the than the amount that she paid for the item. So there'll be a difference there that's automatically calculated by the system. So I'm going to quickly show you that. We've only done the only one transaction that required something like that. So we can quickly see the amount on the trial balance in this situation. You can also open up your journal entry. So you'll see we now have exchange gain or losses. On the debit side, this is an, uh, this is a, an expense account. So we lost 54 cents on that particular transaction. So that's using multiple currencies with QuickBooks Online. Thanks so much for watching.